Hello. So you see here a board, and we're going to make more of this board. This board in real life would probably be about 20 inches by 16 inches. And if I were to take this and bring it into that room scene and stretch it across the fireplace, the grain would also be enormous. So you need to think about scale when you're doing retouching. So I need to make more of this board. So before you go in and you retouch, you want to think about where you're going to put this board. So the fireplace is, um, if I go across the top, but you might want to um, maybe do something vertical, you know, around a doorway or something. So think about what you want and plan accordingly to expand the board in that direction. Okay, so the first thing I do is I go to the layer and I'm going to click on background so that it becomes a transparent layer. And what that means is if I go and take a chunk out of it like that, you're going to see that checkerboard, which means that it's transparent. Now the next thing I'm going to do is add more um, canvas area around here. So remember we went to image size, which we changed, we worked with the DPI. We're going to go to canvas size, which is going to make the, um, the size of our image bigger, but it's going to keep the resolution the same. So I want to make it three boards long, two boards to high. So I'm going to make this 30. And then the bottom one, I'm going to make <clears throat> 22. Now I'm leaving it in the middle here so you can see what happens. So it's in the middle. So I'm going to go back, I'm going to Command Z, and I'm going to do that again. So you see canvas size, I'm going to change the width to 30 and the height to 22. So you guys will be using whatever numbers you want for your space. And I'm going to click here in the corner. And now what happens is it puts the artwork in the lower left corner. Okay. So now I am going to select all, Command A. I'm going to Command C to copy and Command B to paste. All right now you see it's created another layer. I'm going to take this I'm going to bring it down here and I'm going to zoom in so I can um, see the grain better and also I can make sure that it's overlapping, make sure you don't have a white space there. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to flatten my layers, okay? So now you can either merge down, which will make layer one go into layer zero, which is the same as um, uh, merging all layers, okay? So now I've got these two boards that look like identical tiles almost, and I want to not have that. I want it to be integrated and look like one board. So I am going to have to retouch this by going and using the clone stamp tool. So make sure it is not the pattern stamp to tool, but the clone stamp tool, okay? So another thing I do is I look at the grain. So this grain makes a nice swoosh over this way. This part of it has a lot of personality. So if I were to copy that, you'd see that same image duplicated again and again. So I want to avoid that. Um, so I like this shape here. So maybe what I'll do is I will um, take my um, using the option key, I'm going to click on this area here, and then I'm going to drag it in through here. And I'm pulling it, sort of following the grain, but also looking at what's happening around here. So I'm kind of not doing what I like because I've created that hot spot right there in the middle. So I command Z. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to try this again. I'm going to take from here and I'm going to paint over here, go into here, and I'm going to stop before it gets too dark. Now that really looks like a swoosh in there, but I can play with that a little bit more. It looks integrated here, so I think what I'm going to do is click here and pull a little of this in to integrate that in there. Um, so that softens it a little. I can look at this shape here, I'm going to pull this shape in over here. So I'm clicking here and I'm aligning that image over here. 
I'm going to pull it into here and it's blending kind of nicely right in there. Now I'm stopping because that's where my image stopped and I'm going to um, try to play with this a little more. I'm going to grab some more of this and put it on there and pull in this direction a little. So that's softening and blending a bit better. And this is a very strong line here and it's kind of interesting. So I'm going to click here and drag that and run it into here so it sort of blends in there a bit. And that works pretty well. Again, it's not perfect, but we'll, we'll get to uh, some minor touch-ups later. Um, and this swirling thing isn't working. I really need to make this shape here continue in here or take this one and bring it this way because you don't have this round knotted feeling. So I think this is softer and easier to deal with. So I'm going to play with um, clicking here and continuing to bring it into this space. So um, I'll click here and bring it in Add it a little bit more. Really want to soften up what this looks like here. And maybe what I'll just do is come over here and take some of this dark area that's just sort of neutral and bring that in. And that worked pretty well up there. It's not working as well here, but let me just keep going with it and see what happens. That didn't help. So let me um, let me pull over here. I go into here a little and stop soon enough. And I'm going to pull a little of this darker area here. I'm going to play with that and pull that into there. I hope that looks a little better. And then I'm going to stop. I'm going to keep going because that seems to be working, that light golden color. And I'm going to pull it into here. So that, that blended pretty well. And I'm going to just keep going to soften that. So it's working a little. Um, we're getting there. So I'm going to, this abrupt stop there bothers me. So I'm going to click here and blend that a little. So sometimes it's little moves, sometimes it's bigger moves. Um, this is kind of interesting here. So I'm going to click uh, here and bring that in there a little. But I hit that if you, if you go too close to where the that line is here, then you end up with a too much of a defining line. I'm going to take over here. I'm going to pull it in here. So you kind of get the idea of what I'm doing, I think, right? So it takes some pushing and pulling, but I think we're we're sort of obliterating that defined line. So um, I would continue to work on this more. Probably get some of this area here and soften that in here for one, right? But the other thing I want to show you is I can um, change the opacity of this. So I'm going, this has all been 100%. I'm going to make it 53% now. So now watch when I copy something like, um, say, this area. Let me take this here and blend it into here. So if I click here and drag it in there, see how it's not as dark because it's only 50%. Um, and this edge here is very dark. So what I do is I take from here and I'm going to go over this. So notice, see the little plus mark? So that's where it's always dragging from. So I did that intentionally. I'm going to do Command Z for a second because I knew I'd be taking from this lighter area and riding it into, blending it into this darker area. So again, I'm going to click here. And then as I press and drag here, it's taking that lighter area and it's covering at 50%. So it's pulling the grain as well as the color. So it's getting a little fuzzy. So it's not as clear. See the way it's nice and clear? So it's a little muted. So you have to be careful when you do that, but it's also a great tool. Um, so up here where I have this knot, I might just want to take this darker area and just go over that and it just darkens it. And so the reason why you, you want to go and do the clone stamping rather than just taking, because another thing that you can do that doesn't always work as well 
is I can use the eyedropper. I can pick this color. And so notice this color is over here now. And I can take the paintbrush and I can make the paintbrush that's so got 35% um, opacity there now. And let me, so it's a really tiny dot. Can you see that little tiny dot? So I'm gonna expand that thickness here and I'm gonna make it really soft. And so if I go and brush over this area, I can make it darker and I don't lose some of that definition. So that worked really well there. But what could happen too is that it doesn't work so well because it's just putting flat color on. So it's a back and forth. So in this case, I think that looked really nice. It's got this definition. Where here it looks a little bit muddy. So what you can always do is go back into your histories and you can see where you left off. So you can see, oh wait, did it look better there? Did it look better here? So I kind of liked it before I did that. So I'm going to go back to this step. Now it also erased what I just did there, but um, so I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to grab this paintbrush. And so what happens is as soon as I make another move, this history is going to erase all those other things that came after where it's highlighted. So I can't go back to that again. So if I go and color in here, that becomes my next move. And so those other moves disappear. And so now if I want to take the eyedropper and click get this goldeny color, then I can take the paintbrush and I can brush over this to make it a little darker. And it's not really helping this. I guess what it is is this area is just, that's just the nature of it. It's more um, muddled. Yeah, so command C. So maybe that wasn't the best piece to drag over because it doesn't look nice and clean. But I think you get the hang of it. Um, so now another thing that I want to show you with this is now that when I get this board to where I like it, I will go and um, so I'm going to open up the layers. So this is one layer now. So I'm going to drag over this. I'm going to say copy and paste. And I'm going to paste again. So I don't want to have this exact same pattern over here. So I am going to go and say Command T. So it selects that board. And I can hold down the Shift key to rotate it. And by holding down the Shift key, it rotates it in increments of 45%. And then the other thing that I can do too is um, go under Free Transform. And I could have rotated it here, but then I can also flip um, vertical. So now it changes the direction of it. So this is not refined as much as I would want it to be. So you want to get this board really in good shape before you copy it and make another piece. But so what I have here is a, is a larger plank. So you can have something where you, you do have planks and you go and you, um, I'm going to copy this again, copy and paste, and I have another one of these boards so I can go and um, bring it down here. So, whoops, can't do that again. So it does look like it's planks, although again, here is an example of where I'd have to flip this Sorry, go under transform and I am going to flip it uh, vertical so that it does look like there are two boards meeting. So I've done two things. I've gone and I've pieced boards together so I have longer planks because you don't want to have just that smaller piece and look more like that tile that you see on floors now. So I want to make some planks and clean it up. But again, you want to do a much better job of merging this before you copy and make more. And then another thing I would do is with each one of these, I might, for example, take this one, and remember they're all layers, and I might um, completely cover this, go to fill, and hit 
um, 30% of foreground color.